How much does the room affect the recording? This comes from Ray in Langley, British Columbia, BC, up in Canada. Hey, greetings, Paul. Love the refreshingly human explainer video series. <laughs> I, <laughs> as opposed to the ones with animals. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Uh, goof, goofball. Well done. My question. When recording voice into a microphone inches away, how much does the room's acoustic really come into play? The vibrations from my vocal cords have got to be much louder than what's coming back from the walls, ceilings, etc., doesn't it? It doesn't seem logical to this non-educated audio guy how the room can have such significant effects compared to the voice just inches away. Enlighten me on this, please. Well, certainly. Okay, <clears throat> let's see. First off, I don't think you are uh, off balance here or mistaken at all. Because if, if I have a, let's call this screwdriver a microphone. If I'm speaking very close to this microphone, the chances are I have the level turned down enough that if I were to stop, I would hear very little of the room around me uh, in my I call it podcast room or, the, or the, the little voice studio that we built so I can read my audiobook for 99% true. Um, I, you know, don't want to get too close to the microphone. But I have to turn it up high enough to, so that when I'm kind of far away, like two or three inches away, uh, it, it does pick up some of the room. But typically, if you're close to a microphone, you're not going to hear a lot of the room around there. So the, the quick answer to your question is no. No, you're not going to hear much of the room out there. Now, that said, most recordings that I've seen try not to have the person right up alongside the microphone. And the reason for that is something called the proximity effect. I don't know if you've ever heard of this or not, but microphones are subject to this proximity effect, which means the closer we get to a microphone, the more boomy and chesty our, our voice sounds. So if you look at recording setups for studios and whatnot, you'll notice there's a reasonable distance between the singer or the speaker and the microphone. You can look up uh, audiobook recording or studio recordings on YouTube and look at some of the videos and you'll see people really aren't that close uh, and they shouldn't be because unless you're looking for a special, you know, this real chesty kind of uh, uh, presentation, you're going to want to be away from that microphone. In, in my little studio, in fact, I am away from the microphone. I at first had it maybe about that far, and it's, it just was too chesty. It doesn't sound natural. So the microphone I'm talking on now is this little thing here, this little chingaderis down here. And see, I'm speaking out here, and it's picking up. Not, not, it'll pick up a lot of the room which is good because most rooms that I'm in and most rooms that sound good have walls and reverb and things that, you know, that, that enter into the equation so it sounds decent, though most rooms are kind of echoey. Uh, certainly recording studios aren't. The best recording studios I've seen and been a part of uh, aren't just dead rooms. They are rooms that have a combination of dead and live, live being through diffusers and walls, so that it makes it kind of live sounding. And it's the same thing that you want in your listening room. You don't want a dead room. You want a room that's fairly live, where your voice sounds kind of natural, and to get the best results, you want to stay away from the microphone a bit, pick up a little bit of that room. So I Hope that answers your question. Uh, I did my best. All right. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate the unusual questions. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.